The walls of Shiloh Temple International Ministries usually ring with the sounds of praise and gospel music. The church has been in the Northside community for more than a decade, offering sermons, food drives, and safe haven for people. But lately, these walls have filled with grief. Services for Linnell Frazier, Anaya Allen, Winston Smith, and countless others were held here this summer. Bishop Richard Howell Jr. has presided over such services, and he believes that the violence runs deeper than a flow of guns on the streets. I do believe that all of this stems from poverty. Um, low social economics has produced this new wave of thinking that is almost a pandemic of sorts. Um, when you are tired of living from hand to mouth every day, when you, are, when you don't have a home to call it a home, you're in a shelter almost every day while you're in school. Um, what does that do to the mental, to the psyche? What happens? How much more pressure can a mother take? Data suggests that that kind of pressure is commonplace and costly for Minnesotans of color. Twice as many people of color in Minnesota live in poverty. A high share of Minneapolis shootings are where impoverished people live, and more than half of all murders in Minneapolis have been where residents of color are the majority. Next Step is one of many violence intervention programs that works to stop shootings from ever happening. They offer job training, trauma care, and financial assistance. Program manager Kentrell Galloway says that most of their clients look like him, and the financial costs of getting shot adds more trauma to their lives. If I'm an innocent bystander and I get caught in a, in a drive-by, you know, and I'm I recover and I'm, and I, I'm lucky to make it alive with my life, you know, the next thing is how am I going to pay for my bills because I can't work because I just got shot. Community, government, the private sector, and the police all have to be working in harmony to, to you know, to really reduce this. And then we also have to change some laws. Some laws in our state have to change that put a lot of barriers in front of some of these folks who are trying to work their way out of poverty or work their way out of the violent situations that they're in. Several bills were introduced this year to support crime victims' finances, but none of them passed. There is the Minnesota Crime Victim Reparations Board, which has helped to pay for crime victims' funerals and other expenses for decades. They spent nearly three and a half million dollars last year, and a third of the claims for aid this year have come from Hennepin County. But advocates like Bishop Howell suspect that crime will continue to rise. Fallout from the pandemic continues to affect an unequal share of black, indigenous, people of color's communities. Federal unemployment checks end this September, and more than half of the state's black and indigenous workers have filed for such benefits. Howell said that he and other congregants have mobilized to crime hotspots to promote peace instead of violence. And though he worries about what's ahead, he remains hopeful. We can go out and reclaim our community. We have a lot of people that need help. We have a lot of people that need to be treated with substance abuse. And that's part of the problem, why these behaviors have, have, have increased. But I think the greatest, and I mean the greatest, weapon we have, and I mean the greatest, and no one can beat it, is love. Love these individuals to life. Thank you.